fragmentation shawl is the first shawl in my new collection called Modular Coloring Shawls. So it's the first pattern all about these modular constructions and color blocks with garter stitch. So I designed all these shawls as these blank canvases with really bold geometric shapes for you to inject your own color ideas into. So the fun part about this modular coloring series is every pattern includes a schematic illustration. So it's like a coloring book pattern. So you can color in the schematic illustration and plan your color palettes with some pencils or markers. And then you can cast on and customize all the blocks with your stash or with a fun kit at Stephen and Penelope. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some color ideas and we're going to learn how to cast on. So there's timestamps below this video. If you wanna skip ahead to the cast on tutorial, I'll show you every step to get this shawl started and how to do those modular joins. So let's get started with these techniques and cast on the fragmentation shawl. The fragmentation shawl is designed for seven colors of fingering weight yarn, starting with color A at the top center of the shawl. Later on in this video, I'll give you some more color ideas and advice for selecting colors, but we're gonna jump straight into the pattern. So you can skip ahead in the video to any of the timestamps linked down below, but we'll start by choosing our seven colors and we're gonna cast on with color A. On page one of the pattern, you'll get the beautiful shawl. Page two, we have all the information. So make sure you have the correct yardage. I overestimated a little bit, but make sure you have at least 300 yards, 274 meters of each color. Colors A through G. This is color A, my lightest, all the way to color G, the last seventh color. On page three of your pattern, you're going to find this page, which I recommend printing out. At the very least, just to have at your side knitting because it's like a map showing you every single stripe number and exactly where every color is placed in the shawl. So when you look at the illustration like this, we're gonna begin with wedge one, making individual pieces, just like the slices of a pizza. We're gonna make seven slices, seven wedges, one at a time. We're gonna make wedge one, and then wedge two is going to be attached to wedge one as you knit the new wedge. They're all similar sizes, but they have a different color layout. You can use this map to place the colors wherever you want. So you could design your own color arrangement with as many colors as you want. So use this map to your advantage and you could do a 10 color version and map out where you're gonna place all those colors. In the pattern, I wrote exactly all of the instructions for all seven wedges. And in the instructions, I wrote exactly where to change colors. So if you have your seven colors, just do exactly what the pattern says, but this map is gonna help you. So this is just a bonus little tool for you to use. Color A is that top center. And then we're gonna work with color B, C, D, E, F, G, and repeat. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D. So we're going to work 21 total stripes for our pattern. So you could draw and place which colors are which and just use it like a paint by numbers style. So find everywhere I wrote color A and draw your color. Everywhere I wrote color B, you could draw and color your uh, color that you want. And the numbers in these wedges refer to the stripes. So stripe number one, is this. Every stripe represents seven garter ridges or 14 rows. Stripe two, stripe three, stripe four. So that's why I wrote in wedge one, this is 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D, which means it's stripe four with color D. So this is gonna help you a lot. So let's take some time to plan your colors and that's gonna be a really fun tool to visualize what your shawl is going to look like. Let's cast on with color A. Color A is gonna be my lightest color at the top center of the shawl. This color is also going to be the first stripe in wedge seven. So color A is the lightest color in this sample. When in doubt, just start with your favorite color or the lightest color and that's a good place to start. Follow along with your PDF pattern as I demonstrate all of these techniques to begin your shawl. And if one part is easy for you, you can skip ahead with the timestamps linked down below, 
to watch any part of this tutorial at your own pace. Cast on three stitches using any cast on method you like, and you could slip those three to the needle so you can knit them again, or you could turn around and just knit them. But to get started, just make sure you have three stitches and they're in any position to knit. So I'm going to knit those three, and then slip those three onto the left needle. Repeat from the asterisk twice more. Knit three, slip three. Knit three, and slip three. Now, after you did that twice more, we're going to knit three. Pick up and knit three stitches along I-cord edge. We're gonna pick up three stitches right here by going into both legs of each I-cord stitch. One, two, and three. This is called the I-cord tab cast on. One more time, go into both legs, wrap the yarn around, and pull it through. Do that three times. It's really tiny, so have a little bit of patience at the beginning, and whatever works, there's no right or wrong. Just make sure you have six stitches on your needle, like that. Next row, wrong side. Pick up and knit three stitches along this I-cord cast on edge, starting with the stitch closest to the left needle tip. That means this one right here. This is a little strand of yarn close to our needle tip. Just pick it up and knit it. And then get another strand of yarn at that little edge and something down here. This works. Or if something's hard to go into, then just go into this looser strand of yarn. There we go. One, two, three. Three stitches picked up and knit. It doesn't matter what you get. Just get anything, and we can use this little tail of yarn to do some surgery later if it looks a little wonky. Knit three. Slip three with yarn in front. You should have nine total stitches on your needle. If you didn't get it, then rewind this video and watch it again and try it. It's a really small beginning, so if it takes you a few tries, keep on practicing because I use this cast on in so many of my West Knits shawls. Row one, right side. Knit three. Make one with the backwards loop cast on, like this. This is the make one I use for this pattern. One more time, if you hold the yarn in your right hand, make one, just give the yarn a little twist and place it on the needle like that. So it makes this little backwards loop locking, this little twisted make one increase. Knit one, make one three times. Knit one, make one. Knit one, make one. Knit one. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, just give it a twist like that and pop it on the needle for that third make one. You want to make sure that it has that little twist. It's not a yarn over. You don't want it slipping off the needle. It's a little make one backwards loop twist. At the end of your row, slip three with the yarn in front. You should have 13 stitches after row one. Row two, knit 10, slip three with yarn in front. When you look at the wrong side, the yarn is already in back. So you can just knit 10. Sometimes if any stitch is tight, I find that sometimes with make one increases, it's a little tight. You can just loosen it up a little bit like that and then knit it. Knit 10, and at any time in this pattern, if you're off one stitch or have a stitch too many, just keep going, okay? Just sneak in an extra stitch or add an extra decrease if you need to, but don't worry about the stitch count because it's just garter stitch. It's all about the colors and the shapes of the shawl. Don't worry too much about the stitch count as long as you can just sneak one in later. 
All right, row three, right side. Knit three, knit front back. Knit into the front and back of the stitch like this. Knit six. Let me do that knit front back one more time. So knit three, knit front back. Knit into the front and back of the stitch. Knit six. And slip the last three stitches with yarn in front. So we just worked a right side row, row three. You should have 14 stitches. It helps me when I start these tiny shawl beginnings, place a stitch marker on the right side. So whenever you finish a right side, just put a stitch marker in the fabric to tell you that's the right side. That's the wrong side. So you don't get mixed up as you work these rows. Row four, wrong side, knit three, knit front back. Knit seven, three, four, five, six, seven, slip three with yarn in front. All right, let's do some of those make one increases for row five. We're on the right side, so we knit three, make one, knit one, make one nine times. One, two, three, knit one, Make one, four. It doesn't matter which way you twist it. I'm going this way, but if you twist it this way, that also works. As long as, look at that, you get that little, do you see that little crisscross? That's what you wanna see. It doesn't matter which way you twist, as long as you twist. So I'll keep on going, nine total times. Knit one, make one. You should be at the final three stitches after you knit one, make one nine times. Slip three with yarn in front. You should have 25 stitches after row five. And look at that, we're getting a little semicircle. We're gonna keep on growing with color A. So keep on following the pattern for row six, rows seven and eight, and pay close attention. We're gonna repeat rows seven and eight in the pattern. So keep on following the pattern until you have 35 total stitches using those techniques. Once you have 35 stitches, it should look just like this, and we knit the top center of the shawl. Or it's like the bottom bit when you're looking at it like this, but when you're wearing the shawl, it's that top center bit with color A. Now we're going to do wedge one. We're going to work with the stitches at the end of the row. So break color A, leaving a tail about this long, and we'll use color A later, but we're gonna start working with our next colors using color B. As we introduce new colors, we can use the weave in Steven. I'll show you how to do that technique to weave in your ends as you go. But with right side facing for wedge one, slip the first 27 stitches onto a spare circular needle or waist yarn. I recommend to use a waist yarn for this because that's gonna feel the nicest as you're knitting all these sections. So, the first 27 stitches go onto your waist yarn. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 14, 16, whoop, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. There we go, 27 stitches. Those are just gonna go on your waist yarn and they're gonna hang out until we work with them later. So when you put them on waist yarn, I don't want that waist yarn to accidentally come out when I'm knitting. So I do this little loop. 
I just crisscross it. I pull a little loop through like that. And that keeps it secure. And then when I'm ready to open it up later, I can just do that. But make a little... Whoop. Should look like that. This is what I love to do when I put stitches on waste yarn. Just keeps it a little secure so I know they're not going to go anywhere. Okay, so row one, right side. We are going to refer to these as the final eight stitches of the row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Row one refers to these eight stitches. Using color B, knit five. One, two. After I knit that second stitch, I'm gonna do the weave in Steven, where you just cross the yarn, the tail of yarn on top of your working yarn. Three and cross, four, and cross, five, knit five, and do that little weave in Steven crisscross, and that weaves in your end. Slip the last three with yarn in front. Eight stitches are on your needle. Row two, wrong side, Knit seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Slip that last stitch with yarn in front, just like that. Row three, right side, knit front back. Knit into the front and back of that first stitch. Knit four. One, two, three, four. Slip three with yarn in front. You should have nine stitches on your needle after row three. Keep on following the instructions for rows three, four, five, all the way to row 14 in your pattern, and you should have seven garter ridges, 14 total rows. So keep on following the instructions and I'll see you after row 14. This is what wedge one should look like after row 14. You should have seven garter ridges with color B. Break color B, leaving a tail about that long. We're going to use color C. So for the next color, this is going to be stripe two. I wrote out in the pattern which color to use. This was stripe one with color B. Stripe two is gonna be with color C. So we're gonna work a repeat of rows 15 through 28. We're gonna make seven garter ridges for each color. And whenever it says using next color, just use the next color in your sequence. So that means for wedge one, stripe one was color B. Then we're gonna do C. D, E, F, G, and then we're going to repeat. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, all the way until you have 21 total stripes. But with color C is the first time we work row 15, right side, using next color. This is color C. Knit to last stitch. I knit my first two stitches and then I start doing the weave in Steven. I'm gonna take both tails of yarn, my new color and my broken old color, take both of those tails of yarn and wrap them around your working yarn as you knit to last three stitches. Do the weave in Steven so you don't have to weave in those ends later. This, you're gonna be so happy and thankful that you did this later. I love this trick. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, as you're knitting across the row, you might have to drop your yarn to cross your broken tails of yarn. If this feels like it's too thick for you, you could just do it with one of the tails and then the next right side row, do it with the second tail. But I don't care, I like this shortcut. So I'm gonna take both tails and cross them. You do this throughout the entire shawl. Whenever you break your yarn, you can do this weave in Steven. Just do it for like eight stitches or so for all of the sections. You don't have to do it for a long distance. Like this is enough. 
And then after you're done with that weave in Steven, oh, I'm done, ready for the end of the row. Slip the last three with yarn in front. And look at that, that's the weave in Steven. We don't have to weave in those ends anymore. So you can snip those ends. Don't snip them too close to the fabric. These are the broken tails of yarn that you just knitted into the fabric. Just cut them like that. Let there be some length hang in there so that when you stretch the knitting, they can nestle into place. But that's all you have to do to weave in your ends as you go. Row 16, wrong side. Knit to last stitch. So we're, we're, we are working easy garter stitch, knitting all of our stitches, slipping the last stitch with yarn in front on the wrong side. And then we have some increase rounds, increase rows on row 17. Knit front back, row 17. Knit to last three stitches. So keep on following rows 15 through 28. You have an increase on row 17, that second garter ridge that we're doing, and an increase on row 23. That's gonna be the fifth garter ridge. So pay close attention. There'll be some increase rows on rows 17 and 18, and rows 23 and 24 have the increases, and all the rest of the rows are plain. So that's gonna make a really slow increase to our wedge. So I'll see you at the end of row 28. Keep on going. After you complete stripe two, you should have seven more garter ridges with color C. Every stripe adds four stitches to your total stitch count. So you had 12, now you have 16 after stripe two. So just keep on going. Make sure you always have four more stitches. So continue repeating all of the rows in the pattern repeat rows 15 through 28 until you have 92 total stitches or 21 total stripes. All of these stripes, 21. I ended with color A in wedge one. If you wanna make your shawl smaller, this is a good indicator of how big your shawl is gonna be. After you finish your wedge one stripes, this is going to be half of your wingspan length. So if you're getting towards those 19, 20 numbers of stripes, and it's like, oh, this shawl is getting huge, you could bind off early at any time. And just make sure if you customize the size, just make sure that all of your wedges match that number of stripes. When in doubt, just knit 21, do the pattern as written, and that's the size you'll get. And uh, 21 stripes is what we're going for, and then we're going to do an I-cord bind off. So after stripe two, you can break your yarn and use color D for stripe four. But I'm going to do the I-cord bind off just to demonstrate the bound off technique. So this is next row, right side. We're going to knit one row and then bind off on the wrong side. Again, I'm just demonstrating for the sake of showing it. You're gonna break this yarn and keep on doing more stripes. So pretend that we're at our final stripe. You have 92 stitches. 21 stripes and keep the yarn attached to your final 21st stripe. This will be with color A. You'll keep color A attached and we're going to knit all the way across the right side. Next row, right side. We're using the same color that you just used for that final stripe. Knit to last three stitches. And you'll slip the last three with yarn in front. Okay, let's I-cord bind off. Next row, wrong side. Knit two. Knit two together through the back loop. Slip three stitches onto left needle and repeat. Knit two. Knit two together through the back loop. Knit two. Knit two together through the back loop. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, you're going to knit two, knit two, knit two together through the back loop. Keep on doing that all the way to the end of this wedge. When you're finished doing the I-cord bind off, you should have three stitches remaining. Break your yarn, leaving a tail, 
and place those three stitches onto waist yarn, or you could place them onto this split ring marker. This is gonna keep them nice and secure. We're going to use those three stitches later to continue the bind off on the next wedge. So place those onto waist yarn or a marker. You've got your broken tail. If you put them on waist yarn, it's a nice idea to do that little loop knot closure to make sure they don't slip away. But again, this is the bind off after you have 21 total stripes all the way over there. So keep on going wedge one and you bound off. Now let's get ready for wedge two. Wedge two, we're going to continue with some of our stitches that we set aside from the beginning color A stitches. Keep the first 23 live color A stitches on your waist yarn. And with the right side facing, place the final four live color A stitches onto your working needle. So these are the final four stitches. I just wanna get each of those onto my needle before I take out my waist yarn. We just need four stitches. So here we go with the right side facing. This is the right side. That's the wrong side. They're on our working needle and then you can take out that waist yarn just from those four and keep the other 23 stitches. You should still have 23 stitches now on that original waist yarn. I don't want those to slip away. So I'm gonna make my little loopy knot lovely. And we're gonna start knitting wedge two. We're going to begin wedge two with color C. So follow your map, follow the instructions, or follow your own color map that you drew out. And we're gonna use color C. This is gonna be the same color that we used for stripe two. So we're gonna start getting this nice staggered effect, starting with color C for wedge two. Row one, right side. Using C, knit four, one, two, three, four, make one left. So lift the strand of yarn after that stitch you just knit. We're gonna put that onto the left needle. So the left needle goes into the front of that little strand of yarn and knit it through the back loop for a make one left. Slip one with yarn in front, a picked up selvage stitch from wedge one. So this is what we're gonna do at the end of every right side row. Pick up a selvage stitch like this. Pick up both legs of that first selvage stitch. So that's color B, we're picking up that color B selvage. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches on your needle. I counted that picked up stitch as one stitch. So you have six stitches. Row two, wrong side, knit two together. The yarn is in back. Knit these two stitches together. You're knitting the selvage stitch together with your last color C stitch. Knit three. Slip one with yarn in front. Row three, right side. I didn't do the weave in Steven because there were so few stitches. You could do the weave in Steven for a few, but when there's so few stitches, we might have to weave this in with the tapestry needle later. <sighs> That's okay. But we can do the weave in Steven for every other stripe in this wedge. Row three, right side, knit front back. Knit three, one, two, three. Slip two with yarn in front. The last stitch and next picked up selvage stitch from wedge one. Okay, slip two with yarn in front. Just bring the yarn forward and slip that last stitch. And this is the next picked up selvage stitch from wedge one. So that's slip two with yarn in front. One, two. Always take the needle from behind like that. Row four, wrong side, knit two together. We're going to knit these two stitches together. Remember those two legs that you picked up, that counts as one stitch. So we need to knit our current color of yarn together with the picked up stitch 
for the knit two together. Knit front back, knit three, one, two, three, slip one with yarn in front. You should have seven stitches after row four. Row five, right side. We're gonna keep on doing these pickup techniques. There's no increases in this row. Row five, knit to last stitch, slip two with yarn in front. So that's the last stitch. We're gonna slip one and slip two. Here we go, those are two stitches. You can see that this selvage stitch is the one you went into the last time because there's a little strand of yarn coming from it. So don't go into that one again. Always go into the next one. Row six, knit those two together. And that's what the wrong side is looking like. Knit to last stitch, slip one with yarn in front. There are still seven stitches at the end of row six. Keep on following rows seven through 14 until you have seven garter ridges. That last garter ridge that you knit, the seventh garter ridge, that will be going into this final selvage stitch on row 13. So attach all of your new rows to the previous stripe from wedge one. After you complete row 14, it should look like this. Break color C, and we're going to continue our striping sequence for wedge two. Follow your color map as written. We just did one C, stripe one with color C. We're gonna do two D, or use whatever colors you want, depending on what you drew for your map. But using next color, row 15 right side, is gonna be with color D for the recommended seven color pattern. Row 15, using next color, knit to last stitch. I'm gonna take both tails of my yarn and do the weave in Steven for, I'll do it till I reach the end of the row. So always do the weave in Steven for like seven or eight stitches is good. 10 is even better, but yeah, eight stitches is enough. This is a short row, so I'm just gonna do the weave in Steven as much as I can. All right, row 15, knit to the last stitch. Here I am. Slip two with yarn in front. Yarn is in front. Slip one and two. We're gonna get that first selvage stitch from that new color from stripe two. Row 16, wrong side, knit two together. Remember, when you knit two together, that selvage stitch, this counts as one stitch. So don't just knit that, that counts as one stitch. You wanna knit that final stitch from the row together with the picked up stitch. Like this, knit two together. Knit to last stitch, slip one with yarn in front. These are gonna be the same techniques. We're going to keep on knitting in garter stitch. At the end of every right side row, you're going to slip the next selvage stitch until they're all attached as you work stripe two. And then for the pattern repeat of rows 15 through 28, just remember that rows 17 and 18 are our increase stitches, our increase rows and also rows 23 and 24 have increases. So pay close attention as you repeat rows 15 through 28. You'll have some plain rows, but that second garter ridge and that fifth garter ridge of every stripe will have increases. But yeah, just follow the rows closely and I'll see you at the end of stripe two. This is what stripe two in wedge two should look like attached to the previous wedge, and we're getting this beautiful staggered color interaction. Keep on going, repeating rows 15 through 28, 19 more times until you have one, two, three, 21 stripes in wedge two. You want the same number of stripes in wedge two as wedge one. So after you finish stripe two with color D, break your yarn and use color E for stripe three. 
So follow the pattern for the recommended colors and follow your map as well. 3E and then 4F. Stripe 5 will be with G. Stripe 6 will be with A. So follow your map to get the right color placement and always look at your knitting too. Sometimes you can think you're reading the right thing, but you know, knit what looks beautiful, okay? <laughs> We're getting these staggered blocks, so you never want the same number stripe to be the same color. Uh, I mean, yeah, not for this design. You can do whatever you want, but don't do that, okay? It should always be staggered, do you see? So like this one is stripe one, but the red is stripe two, and then stripe three. So you get that beautiful design. I am going to bind off just to show you. So at the end of wedge two, just keep on going till you have 21 stripes. You should have 89 stitches at the end of wedge two. If you don't have 89 stitches, don't worry about it. As long as you're close, if you have 87 or 85, 83 even is fine. As long as you get a shape that looks like the design with increases, you're okay. If you don't have the exact stitch count, you probably just missed an increase row or something, but it doesn't matter. It's garter stitch. You're gonna get the exact same size shawl. I would only rip out this whole section if you find that you have like 120 stitches or if you have 70 stitches or 60 stitches, that's not enough. You wanna get close to 89 at the end of wedge two. All right, this is next row right side. I'm working at the end of wedge two. Next row right side, you use the same color as your final stripe of the wedge. Knit to the last stitch, slip two with yarn in front. One, and here's that final stitch. It's near, that, near those live stitches by that bind off. One, two, next row, wrong side, knit two together, slip that stitch onto left needle, just like that. Slip these three I-cord stitches from wedge one onto the left needle. One, two, three. We want all three of these stitches. If they feel a little bit tight, you might need to pull on them a little bit to make sure your needle can go through them. But it should look like that. We're looking at the wrong side. Place the three I-cord stitches onto the left needle. Knit two, knit two together through the back loop. One, two, knit two together through the back loop. Slip three stitches onto left needle. Repeat from asterisk until all wedge two stitches are bound off. Knit two, knit two together through the back. Keep on going until all of these wedge two stitches are bound off. When you finish binding off all your stitches, you can break your yarn and place those three stitches onto waist yarn or onto that split ring marker. So set those three I-cord stitches aside. And again, we're gonna do the same thing, continuing those three to the bind off of the next wedge. Those are all the techniques for the fragmentation shawl. The most important part is that slip and the knit two together to join all your wedges. So you get that seamless continuation. And don't forget to do the weave in Steven technique so that all of those ends are woven in as you go. And then your wrong side will look like this. So these are all the little ends. They poke out a teeny bit on the wrong side, but that's fine. Just leave them there and they're not gonna go anywhere. So keep on using all those techniques and following the pattern closely for wedges one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just remember that wedge seven, you'll be doing that I chord. So that's written into the instructions. Everything is written out row by row and you'll have those beautiful color interactions. Let's look at some other color ideas so we can map out and plan our beautiful color palettes. These modular coloring shawls, like the fragmentation shawl, are really designed to be landscapes for you to customize and do your own patterns. But I show you exactly the recommended pattern to do, but play with this map to give you a good idea. And it's really great for single skeins, or you could do a leftover version. What if you do like a different color for every single stripe? 
and do like 21 colors. <gasps> oh my gosh, you could really go crazy. But seven colors is a really good amount to get that beautiful patterning and you get lights and darks. So when you have a pile of yarns together, it honestly doesn't really matter what order you place them in because the color sequence is staggered and it goes all over the place. But just start, when in doubt, you could start with a color pop or your favorite color. So this was my color A. And you can use these vivid speckled yarns as well. These are all from Walk Collection. And when you use speckled yarns in this pattern, I think it's still really beautiful. It's like a beautiful graphic painting. And there's a big block of each section, so that's enough space for a variegated or hand-dyed yarn to really shine. But if you only use those speckled colors, it gets really, really blendy. So with this design, I really like mixing it with solids to get that crisp, punctuated relief. So I started with this green as the color A, and then just play around. What kind of colors are speaking together? Oh, I really love these next to each other because the purple picks up off of that. So maybe those two have to go together. Oh, that has the green in it. That looks really nice. And just play around with some random assortments from there. These I love next to each other because they're so rustic. And I always love having light to dark moments, going light to dark light to dark. So I started with my green and they went into the browns and then I just love this little light to dark transition and then these two colors got to go next to each other which was so fabulous for that high contrast purple green effect. Play around, there's no right or wrong but it's really good for single skeins. I grabbed some of these Neighborhood Fiber Company colors as inspiration. These are just so so beautiful. So if you're using colors like this Start to play with them from light to dark and see what tones are speaking nicely next to each other. Oh, I'm loving this. Oh, I think this is it. I love the smoky blues together and I love these grays. So I would start color A and work my way toward color G. These colors are called Charles Center, Federal Hill, Lexington Market, Rosemont, Holland's Market, Broadway Market, and Reservoir Hill. Reservoir Hill, right there. So these are all Neighborhood Fiber Company and their organic rustic fingering. It's a non-superwash yarn, and I love this fingering weight base for these modular coloring shawls because it's so soft but has that buoyant, cloudy uh, structure to the wool. Yeah, it gives a really nice life to the fabric. And then this other sample I was showing and knitting with in the Technique videos, this was also Walk Collection. They have a beautiful palette of smoky semi-solids and some splashy speckles as well. So play around with your skeins and just arrange, make your own color sequence. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine, but go light to dark. See what kinds of colors you like next to each other. Ooh, I'm loving that. And just go for it. And if you get bored, sneak in an extra color and you can design your own color sequence and maybe every single wedge is a different color palette. How amazing would that be if you have a ray of sunshine and you've got a yellow wedge and an orange wedge and a red and a blue, green, purple. Just use your stash and get creative with your colors and use that map as your handy tool to help you along the way. Well, I hope that was really helpful to get you cast on and started with all those modular techniques. And just remember, this is a really simple garter stitch shawl, but there is some shaping going on, but don't stress out, okay? Just say yes, I can do this. Don't stress, say yes, don't stress. And don't worry about the exact stitch counts. If you're off a couple stitches, just keep going, okay? It's just garter stitch. As long as you're getting these angles and shapes growing, if you're off a few stitches, it's okay. Just sneak them in or forget about them. It doesn't matter. They're just straight lines and garter stitch. So don't focus too crazy hard, but make sure it looks something like this, okay? And once you get used to it, every section is repeating. So all the techniques I showed in this video will get you going for the whole body of the fabric. And then it's up to you to customize the colors. So I wanna see what color palettes you're coming up with because I've done a couple versions but I can only knit so many shawls and uh, this is one of those patterns that looks so different depending on the color palette. So it's your job to make it better, okay? 
I did pretty good. These are some pretty good color palettes, but you gotta make it better, which means you just have to love every color moment. And if you get bored, throw in another color pop, okay? And th that schematic illustration, I think, is really gonna help you plan out your colors so you don't get lost along the way. So start with a plan, have a trajectory of where your colors are gonna go, and then share your progress. So I can't wait to see um, how you've adapted this pattern. And if you fall in love with this modular type of knitting, I made a whole workshop all about modular knitting called Modular Magic. So you could download that. Um, well, you don't have to download. You can just stream it and watch it on westknits.com. I'll put a link to that workshop. But it's all about this modular construction because it's like a puzzle. Once you find one fun shape to play with modular knitting, there's so many multiple directions you can take it. So check out that Modular Magic Workshop if you're a little intrigued on how to design your own modular shapes. And uh, we're going to have some more fun this year with a lot of other shawls in this modular coloring theme. So I'll put all the links down below so you can sign up for that ebook and check out that workshop for some more technique inspiration. And I'll post some more videos as the new shawls come out throughout the year for modular coloring. So thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see your fragmentation shawls. So much fun.